Let's talk about lower body training. The lower body is the base of all movement, athletic or otherwise, and we start to build up our movement patterns and lower body strength pretty much from when we start to walk as babies. And then once we start to play sport, those qualities start to develop in specific ways depending on the demands of that sport. But as a result of all that contact with the ground, as well as contact from opponents, it's also where the majority of musculoskeletal injuries occur in sports, i.e. injuries in joints, bones, and muscles. So when planning lower body training in the off season, I begin with body weight movements that work on improving body control in difficult positions to build up some injury prevention qualities. I like to do this mainly through oscillations slash lower ranges of motions, like these ATG split squat and Spanish squat oscillations. But also I'd like to build strength in lengthened positions as well, such as these hamstring slider alternations and the foam roller contractions. Of course, we also have to work the foot slash ankle complex, making sure that it is adequately strengthened both in the front and back of the joint, which we can do through exercises like a tibialis raise or the straight leg and bent knee variations of a calf raise. Next, we can start to lift some actual weight using some basic compound movements like a barbell back squat or a trap bar deadlift. In both instances, we do want to lift heavy so that we can increase our overall strength and power of the lower body going up to about 85% of your one rep max. You'll notice that on the barbell squats, it's only a partial range of motion and I have the racks there to stop myself going even lower. And that's because I wanna focus on the concentric phase of the movement, i.e. pushing the bar up, because that's more like an athletic situation that you'll see in sports rather than a deep squat. But we'll keep the trap bar deadlift as a full range of motion exercise to complement our overall strength and power development. And we do still keep working on the feet as well, but we can start to add weight to that by using a barbell for a straight straight leg calf raise and maybe a seated calf raise machine for the bent knee calf raise. Then we can start to do some unilateral work to build up strength on one side of the body at a time. This allows us to account for any strength imbalances we might have on one side if we do have a stronger side, but still maintain our overall strength and power. So the main adjustment when working unilaterally is that we we'll use a Smith machine rather than using free weights like a barbell, just because we can still lift very heavy using a Smith machine without balance being a limiting factor to the exercises. Like on the rear foot elevator elevated split squat here or a step up. And finally, we can get to some full range of motion free weight exercises like a traditional barbell squat and make it slightly more difficult by using maybe a one and a half rep variation. But we'll reduce the overall sets and reps as we're getting closer to the season. However, we can still superset this with some plyometric exercises that aren't too taxing on the body, like a deloaded jump. So to recap, we start by strengthening in weaker positions at body weight and add compound movements at larger ranges of motion to build up strength and power. Then we add unilateral movements to fix imbalances on each side. And finally, we can get into full range of motion strength movements whilst also supersetting them with plyometrics. If you like this breakdown, then check out the video that's about to come up on screen, which will explain how athletes can train their upper body. And you might as well subscribe whilst you're at also, check the description of this video for a free vertical jump workout, which you can find at www.elitesmartathletes.com, and I'll also link it up here too. But until next time, stay blessed.